today's electromagnetic world, trust nature's call when it comes to ultimate health. Cell phones, cordless phones, cell towers, Wi-Fi, smart meters. Are you worried about your EMF exposure? There are solutions. Welcome to Electric Sense, where healthy living never felt so good. And now, your host. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Henry. And I'm here with Lloyd Burrell, author of Long-Term EMF Protection, Start Feeling Better Today, and webmaster at electricsense.com. Today we'll be talking with Lloyd about EMFs in cars and how to minimize your exposure. Now before Lloyd joins us, just a reminder that if you have questions or require assistance, you can reach Lloyd at electricsense.com and you can join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash electricsensehealth. Lloyd, good day. Good day, Kimberly. It is so nice to talk with you yet again, and um, a subject that I think most of us don't really pay much attention to as far as EMFs, and that's riding in cars. So I look forward to what you have to share with us today. Sure, I look forward to sharing it, as always. <laughs> You've t- Yes, and you do a wonderful job of kind of cluing us in. You know, we all want to feel like we're safe in our surroundings, at our homes, and um, doing the right things for our, our health and our family's health. And uh, you've done a great job of filling us in on some things that we maybe don't realize are going on. Are EMFs in cars a real problem? Well, they can be, yes. And that's why I wanted to cover this one uh, today. Uh, How big a problem really depends on on two things. Uh, Firstly, how much time you spend in your car, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, the EMF levels in your car. And obviously, when I say car, I mean, this also applies to, you know, somebody who's uh, driving a lorry, a van, bus, coach, whatever, you know, same thing. Um, So, yeah, if you drive, obviously, if you're driving for long distances, then um, it's particularly relevant. But it's something that everybody who uses a car should be aware of, uh, because there are always EMS in cars, always, always. And uh, in, you know, sort of typical cars that most people drive anyway. And uh, it's a growing problem because our cars are getting more and more technologically advanced. Uh Uh-huh, I see. And we talk um, about, you know, you used to be able to fix any old car, but now they're just so much more full of computers and electronics. Is that why this problem is growing? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, because... um, I mean, these EMFs have have always been present, really, in cars uh, because it's uh, it's linked to the intrinsic nature of a a motor car. Uh, Magnetic fields, particularly um, uh, uh, present, uh, you know, even going back to the very early days uh, of when the motor car was first invented. Uh, The 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 modern combustion engine uh, Mm -hmm. has spark plugs in it, uh, which ignites, you know, this the fuel air mixture. And, and this ignition in itself is, is a source of magnetic fields and RF radiation. And then you've got all these other things, very basic things like uh, alternator, heating fans, and, and really the whole engine compartment, uh, you know, it's given off uh, EMFs. So if we fast forward now to the 21st century, um, and we've got all this technology now which is being introduced, which is transforming and improving this driving experience we've always had uh the problem is it's 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 contributing to our emf exposures uh, even basic things like the tires uh, many tires now are still belted uh, which means that when they spin round and round and round you know what a magnet does when it spins round <laughs> right. it creates a magnetic field um right. and other things like uh you know, your air conditioning, uh, your car stereo, uh, uh, and so on. And that's, like I say, that's the kind of the, you know, most cars have got this, not all cars have got air conditioning, but, you know, most cars have got tires and car stereos. <laughs> but then you've got other things, which not all cars have, but um, more and more cars have, like Wi-Fi, uh, mm. Bluetooth, uh, GPS, uh, those radars, you know, that beep when you reverse, uh, the remote locking, anti-theft devices uh you know a lot of uh, particular i know german cars over here they've got uh, these tire pressure monitors you know they, they, they there's a, a constant interaction uh between the um the onboard computer and the uh, and the and the tires uh, and so on and so forth 
and uh, as ever, it's 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 the cumulative effect of all this gadgetry. Um, so individually, okay, it might not amount to much, but when you put it all together, um, you know that's what your body um, is exposed to. Yeah, this this cumulative uh, effect. Similar to what we've talked about in our on our homes in our home offices, that there's so many things around us. Exactly, uh, mm-hmm. exactly, and it's just the same thing uh, as with with a car that uh, we're kind of succumbing to this. You know these technological advances and gadgets, and uh, and 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 they are handy and they do they do improve our lives in so many ways. But then there is a downside, and it's it's all about knowing what this downside is, and then making a decision, you know, as to whether it's worth having these gadgets in. Right. And before I move on to my next question for you, I want to remind folks who are listening. If you're curious as to why EMFs are a problem, uh, I would encourage you to to listen back to some of the previous podcasts that we've done with Lloyd talking about the dangers of EMFs and and why it's a concern. Uh, Lloyd, what can you do to minimize your exposure in your car? Right. So... Um, if, if obviously, if the car's already got this gadgetry installed, then um, y- your options are fairly limited. Uh, but there are still some things you can do. And one important thing, which I talked about before, but it's so important, uh, I need to mention it again, is um, sort of as, as an aside to all this, is using your cell phone in your car. Now, when you use your cell phone in your car, um, there's what we call a Faraday cage effect. So the RF radiation is reflected back by the car's metallic structure, which has the effect of magnifying uh, the EMF. So mm. using a cell phone in cars, not a good idea. Um, the second thing then is uh, if you've got all this gadgetry, Bluetooth and so on, Wi-Fi and so on, then um you can disactivate it, you know, you go into the menu and uh, you, you, you know, you, you switch it off. That is uh, nearly always possible. Um, and um, same with the GPS, you know, um, GPS is great. I know if you haven't got it, then you get lost <laughs> because people don't <laughs> tend to have maps these days. But do you really need the GPS on all the time? Yeah, mm. so just switch the GPS on when you need it because that's the same. Yeah, it's uh, it's giving off RF radiation. And what about there? I mean, there's so many devices like um, you can, and then maybe that's the Bluetooth you're referring to, where you can answer your phone through the dashboard of your car. Does that increase the EMF that your cell phone is giving off? Well, yeah, it does because um, you've got another. It's another layer. And, you know, um, uh, people poo-poo this and say, oh, well, you know, it's Bluetooth, it's harmless, it's very low power. It is very low power, but it's pulse digital radiation again. And, um, you know, it's the cumulative effects which, which count. And, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not good. It's not good. So if you're shopping for a new vehicle, what is it best to look for in order to minimize? Well, <laughs> Uh, shopping for a new vehicle, it's better to go for an old vehicle. Um, a if Model A or a Model yeah. T? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Model T Ford, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, you know, it, that's unfortunately the way of the world is that um, older vehicles are more low EMF vehicles. Um, mm. And so because they don't have Bluetooth, GPS and all those other electronic gadgets which I've just, I've just mentioned, um, but there are other things to look for uh, because, as I say, you can um, you know, deactivate these devices. And the things to look for are positioning of uh, battery, the alternator, fuse box, um, these electronics to make sure that you're, you or the passengers or you and the passengers are situated away from these. Mm. Um, and also, generally speaking, uh, diesel engines... Uh, with, with mechanical fuel injection uh, are better than um, petrol engines or, or gasoline uh, because they've, they've no spark plugs, so there's uh, lower uh, magnetic field emissions. Um, so that you can deduce a lot by just looking at the, the vehicle, um, looking at those things. But you know, ultimately, it's the same. We come back to the same thing as in the home. You know, if you really want to know where you are 
with these exposures, then you need to measure them with, with an EMF meter. Um, and what I, what I suggest is, because, um, you know, uh, if you're putting aside Bluetooth, GPS, all that, which is RF radiation, your main concern is magnetic fields. So you'd be looking, you know, you, you need a Gauss meter uh, to measure that. Now, the pe peculiarity of magnetic fields in, in, in cars is that they're DC current magnetic fields, whereas in the home they're AC, you know, mm -hmm. alternating current. Uh, so you do, if you want to, you know, really get accurate measurements, you would need a DC Gauss meter. But for most people, this is not necessary. You can buy a basic meter, something like the Trifield. The Trifield 100XC meter is meter costs just over $100 does lots of things. It measures uh, magnetic, electric, and RF radiation, but it's pretty good for uh, magnetic fields, and it will give you readings which are not particularly accurate, a little higher than the true readings, but you will be able to uh, compare between different uh, vehicles. And so do you get in the vehicle, turn it on, and, and activate all these devices in order to measure them properly? Yeah, well, if it's um, if it's magnetic fields, uh, you get in the vehicle, turn it on, and you move the meter around, and you determine where the magnetic fields are. Um, and you know, if you're doing this before you buy, then you can make the decision as to whether, because there are huge differences. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about magnitudes of ten. Uh, between different vehicles that which look identical to most people but are completely different in terms of the your exposures. Interesting. We have just a couple of minutes left, but I did want to get your take on electric vehicles. Would they be a higher risk for EMFs? Well, um, the thing is, um, electric vehicles, um, so you've got an electric motor, anything with an electric motor in uh, is generating um, electromagnetic fields. Um, so in theory, yes, and the same goes for hybrid cars. The jury's still out, really. Uh, some people say they are worse. Some people say they're better. Uh, hybrid cars, obviously, you've got both. You know, you've got the electric motor and the the regular uh, gasoline. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, the potential is there. Uh, but again, it's a question of really, um, if you are thinking about buying, you know, buying one of these vehicles, I strongly recommend that you, you, you know, you do some tests or get somebody uh, to do the, some testing for you. Sure. Now, most of us get in our vehicles and drive to work or to run errands and then park them. For the day, but what about people who spend a considerable amount of time, like bus drivers or coaches? Yeah, well, it, it's um, the, these bigger vehicles. Um, the, the, the difference is that they, you know, perhaps they run on a, a 24 volts as opposed to, to 12 volts. But really, it's the, the same principles. Uh, but obviously. Um, it's much more important because of the duration of the exposure, as you just said, because these people are spending, you know, um, the whole day in, often in these uh, vehicles. Uh, so in, in which case, I, you know, I really do suggest, you know, getting a meter and doing some testing, um, you know, of your own and, you know, knowing that's the only way you'll really know exactly where you are. And I would also, if you, if you find that your exposure levels are high, then, you know, looking into doing some shielding, uh, you can do some shielding, um, magnetic field shielding with some materials like gyron, for instance, which is a new shielding material, which is very good for this. Um, and you can actually, uh, you can, some places it's difficult to shield, but you can shield very easily the, the footwells, just lay it in the footwells and it can, uh, it's very effective for shielding uh, magnetic fields. You've given us some really good information as always. And I appreciate uh, you sharing that with us. And I know that you've got your free report online. If you would like more information about what Lloyd's sharing with us today, you can download that free report. It's an EMF protection free report at electricsense.com. That's www.electricsense.com. Lloyd, we're just about out of time. Is there anything, last tidbits you'd like to share with us before we wrap things up? You know, I could go on all day and night about all this. <laughs> <laughs> But now it's yeah it, it's be aware of this. I think that's the thing is being aware of this and thinking about this and maybe looking at your own vehicle and making these observations. And then you know obviously you know um, if if you want to make the next step is to you know to buy a meter or not. That that's your decision. But yeah, be aware and know about these dangers.
terrific. We thank you for looking out for us and, and sharing the information. Can you think of someone who might benefit from what we've covered here today? They will thank you for forwarding this episode on to them. You can follow us at Lloyd Burrell on Twitter, and you can join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash electric sense health. Lloyd, thanks again so much. Thank you, Kimberly. Thanks for listening. To join our discussion, visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash electric sense. 